Thank you, John and uh, Daniela. <clears throat> Um, I have no uh, financial conflicts or industry affiliations to declare. I do serve as a consultant to the Gates Foundation and receive grant funding from them. Um, so this is just a quick work in progress slide on the very interesting product pipeline that we are beginning to see where there are a whole slew of uh, NACs already available um, on the market someplace or the other and a bunch of other NACs coming through the pipeline doesn't even capture the non-NAT technologies that are all under development right now. So in this increasingly interesting and competitive market space, we were asked by the Gates Foundation to support such new product development by doing four things. Establishing priorities for new diagnostics. What do we think in the public health sphere is more higher priority than others? Develop detailed target product, product profiles, which Kara just mentioned. Uh, for high priority diagnostics, determine the current served available market for TB diagnostics, and then support further work in forecasting markets for future point of care diagnostics. And that's my team that has uh, worked very hard with me on this particular project, and I'm grateful to them. So the first thing that we looked at was what are the top priorities for TB diagnostics? So here, based on a TB MAC meeting that we had in Amsterdam in April, we came up with our dream wish list of all TB diagnostics that we thought as a group were relevant. For a, for a, from a triage test to decide who to refer for confirmatory testing to a rapid sputum-based smear replacement molecular test at the microscopy center level to a test for cure and a treatment monitoring. What is the next generation DST test going to look like all the way to a more predictive test for latent TB than what we have on the on the market today. So the question is, all nine look important and relevant to us. Could we go through a prioritization exercise to figure out that some are more priority than others? So we approached it by doing a, a needs assessment and a series of uh, analysis. We used 10 different criteria for determine, determining priorities, and more than 40 stakeholders were consulted in this process. So we asked, for example, what do patient and community advocates think is high priority? What do NTP managers think is high priority? What do field practitioners and researchers think is priority? Then we asked modelers on which test would have bigger impact on disease transmission, morbidity, and mortality. What's the market size? And what is the uh, time likely it will take for the product to reach the market? And lastly, we sought data on implementation and scalability of new diagnostics. So effectively, what we did then is by polling different stakeholders, we asked each of them to rank it as high, medium, or low priority. This is a complicated picture for you to see, but basically what I want to show you here is that this is like a heat map. So if it appears dark, that means the consensus from various stakeholders was that it was ranked as high priority. So I'll tell you that uniformly, the top two diagnostics that were ranked very highly across all stakeholder criteria would be a rapid sputum-based molecular test at the level of microscopy centers, where gene expert is not currently working, but a lower than that, was ranked as very high priority by everybody. A rapid biomarker-based instrument-free test for non-sputum samples. Uh, which will allow us to come up to the kind of dipstick kind of a paradigm that we've been wanting, was also ranked very, very high. The only difference between the two was that nobody thought a non-sputum biomarker test will be available on the market within the next five years. So that was the only criteria that got ranked lower. The third test on consensus that ranked very high was a triage test. Now we are referring or testing up to 10 people with suspected TB to find one case. Could we come up with a biomarker or some kind of a method which will help us decide that only a smaller proportion of people will require gene expert or confirmatory testing? That triage slash referral test was also ranked as high priority. So then as a follow-up, we have gone ahead and completed drafting detailed target product profiles on all three of these niches that we think are highly relevant. All three have been drafted. We have a meeting later today to get feedback on this. Uh, several of you have been consulted already. Our goal would be to publish these three, T, three TPPs for product manufacturers or anyone interested in this area within the next, uh, by December or so, 
so that product developers will see this and, and help them guide. Now, TPPs are more like a guidance document. Obviously, product developers will make their own changes and iterations based on what is possible, feasible, and so on and so forth. But I think what we have uh, done uh, with great care is that we have clearly listed the assumptions behind every one of the comments we've made in the TPP. Why should the sem sensitivity be 70? Why not 60? What are the assumptions? What are the data gaps? Where do we not know? And where, we are, where are we purely doing guesswork at this point in drafting TPPs? We are also looking at potential market for all three TPPs, and I'll share with you some of that data. So this is a diagnostic market analysis that we were asked to do by the Gates Foundation in partnership with the new diagnostic working group, Unitaid, as well as FINE, with the great support from country partners. So in South Africa, it was NHLS, in Brazil, it was the Ministry of Health and the NTP, and the China CDC uh, in China. So with all these partners helping us, we decided that we could not replicate the big global find analysis that was done with TDR 10 years ago. That analysis, to my knowledge, is the only global market analysis estimate for TB, and that came up with an estimate of $1 billion spent worldwide on TB diagnostics each year. There was no appetite among anybody to replicate that global analysis. So we decided we're only going to do it in four countries, <laughs> India, China, South Africa, and Brazil. These countries do account for more than 50% of the global burden, and it was doable within a short period of time, and that's the results that I'm going to share with you uh, now. So I'm now going to show you the high-level results for South Africa and Brazil. I don't have the time to go through the methodologies, but I will just tell you the methodology was relatively straightforward. We had to triangulate the number of different diagnostic tests that were done in each country in 2012 and the unit costs associated with each that gave us the overall market expenditure on TB diagnostics. At South Africa, with colleagues from NHLS, and the, and the high level uh, um, number here to see is that South Africa is spending $103 million per year on TB diagnostics in 2012. I'm sure that number is higher in 2013 because they are continuing to rule out gene expert in a big way, so the market size would be different now. Brazil, on the other hand, is spending 17.2 million US dollars per year on TB diagnostics. And we've gone ahead and broken them down. You can see sputum smears still account for more than 50% of test volumes in both countries. Now, what about India? We had done with the Chai and the Indian School of Management a, a market analysis for India in 2011, and we had estimated that India alone is spending 220 million US dollars per year on all TB diagnostics put together, with the private sector spending more than the public sector. The private sector was mostly serologies, and the public sector was almost always sputum smears. Now, everything changed in 2012 in India. Serology got banned by the Indian government, and WHO approved tests are now increasingly being used. So we have to redo the Indian market analysis, and we will get that done in Q1 of next year. So just the high-level data, South Africa is 100 million, Brazil is about 20 million, and if India stays the same, it will be about 200 million. These three countries alone are then spending close to 350 million a year on TB diagnostics. Now, we've just completed, Sandra from my team has looked at smear replacement market in 22 high TB burden countries. And the reason why we looked at sputum smears is this paper has been published in ERJ. We did a snapshot on what is the status of smear microscopy centers in 22 high burden countries. And the answer is it's pretty terrible. Most do not have power, most do not have electricity, they do not have air conditioning. It's a pretty uh, uh, difficult environment. If a molecular test were to be developed for this setting, which Gene Expert is not, but if it were to be developed for these microscopy centers, what would the market look like? That's what we were interested in. And the answer is 22 high TB burden countries alone have 43,000 microscopy centers across them and they are collectively doing 77 million smears per year in just 22 countries, in just the public sector. I'm not talking about private sector in these countries. We have no idea what the private sector is doing in any of the countries. We cannot even get that number from anybody. But if you just poll the NTPs and looked at the public sector, 
that's the overall expenditure. BRICS account for more than 50% of that. So we then took that 77 million and subtracted some numbers. For example, some countries do two smears, three smears, so we, we subtracted that. Some countries, obviously all countries are using smears for treatment monitoring, so we subtracted that. If you subtract all of that, and if you had a $5 smear replacement molecular test, then you are left with that potential market for that test being 153 million only in the private sector, in the public sector, okay? So about 150 million is what the potential market in 22 countries in public sector will look like for a smear replacement molecular test, which can survive in microscopy centers. And if you looked at BRICS alone, where we do have private sector numbers, four BRICS countries alone will give you a market of more than 100 million for such a test. So the next steps would be, we will put all of these TPPs publicly uh, by the end of the year. We will complete the market analysis for China. Our team has already visited China, and China CDC is helping us with that. India data will be revised, and all four country data will be made publicly available, open access for all product developers to use. And we are working with Unitaid and FIND to forecast the market for a triage test, as well as a biomarker-based instrument-free, non-sputum-based test. So everything that I'm telling you will be available on this website and also included in the Unitaid uh, Diagnostics uh, Market Report. So with that, I have too many people to acknowledge, which I won't. I'll just leave the slide there, and I'm, I'm happy to take any quick questions at this time. Otherwise, you're welcome to contact me via email. Thank you.